The Democratic leader is recognized. Thank you, Madam President. In voting to acquit President Trump of an abuse of power and obstruction of Congress, Senate Republicans sought to justify their vote by claiming that the President had, quote, learned his lesson. The implication was that the ordeal of impeachment and its permanent stain on his reputation that can never be erased would chasten President Trump's future behavior. A toddler scolded into compliance. The explanation, frankly, looked like an excuse. It was un in unconvincing the moment it was uttered. No president, no serious person believes tre President Trump has learned any lesson. He doesn't learn any lessons. He does just what he wants, what suits his ego at the moment. Observers of the president would question whether he's even capable of learning a lesson. And unsurprisingly, the flimsy rationalization by some Senate Republicans desperate to have an excuse because they were so afraid of doing the right thing was disproven within a matter of days. President Trump was acquitted by Senate Republicans last Wednesday. On Friday, he began dismissing members of his administration who testified in the impeachment inquiry, including the Patriot Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman and Ambassador Gordon Sondland. A clear and obvious act of retaliation, very simply, that's all it was, against witnesses who told the truth under oath. President Trump hates the truth time and time again because he knows he lies. And when other people tell the truth, he hates it, so he fired them. The president even fired the brother of Lieutenant Colonel Vindman for the crime of being related to someone the president wanted out. How vindictive, how petty, how nasty. And there are rumors now that the president may dismiss the inspector general of the intelligence community, the official who received the whistleblower report. These are patriots all. President Trump can't stand patriots because they stand for country, not for what he wants. Yesterday, once again, and typically, the White House reportedly decided to withdraw the nomination of Elaine McCusker, who was in line to serve as the Pentagon Controller and Chief Financial Officer. Why did he dismiss her? A long time serving, very capable woman. Because over the summer, Ms. McCusker advised, merely advised members of the administration about the legal ramifications of denying assistance to Ukraine. Her crime in the eyes of President Trump and his so many acolytes, henchmen in the administration, was attempting to follow the law. How dare she try to follow the law? How dare she even voice this is what the law is in this kind of administration? And of course, yesterday, after career prosecutors recommended that Roger Stone be sentenced to seven to nine years in federal prison for witness tampering and lying abjectly to Congress, the president tweeted that his former confidant was being treated extremely unfairly. It appears the Attorney General of the United States and other political appointees at the Justice Department intervened to countermand the sentencing recommendation. As a result, in an unprecedented but brave, courageous, and patriotic move, Four career prosecutors working on the Roger Stone case, all four of them, withdrew from the case or resigned from the Justice Department. Asked about the clear impropriety of intervening in a federal case, the president said, quote, he has an absolute right to order the Justice Department to do whatever he wants. This morning, the president congratulated the Attorney General, amazingly enough, for taking charge of the case. The president ran against the swamp in Washington, a place where the game is rigged by the powerful to benefit them personally. I ask my fellow Americans, what is more swampy? What is more fetid? What is more stinking than the most powerful person in the country literally changing the rules to benefit a crony guilty of breaking the law? As a result, I have formally requested that the Inspector General of the Justice Department investigate this matter immediately. And this morning, I call on Judiciary Committee Chairman Graham to convene an emergency hearing of the Judiciary Committee to do the same, to conduct oversight and hold hearings. That's the job of the Judiciary Committee, no matter who is president 
and whether the president's from your party or not. Something egregious like this demands that the inspector general investigate and demands that the chairman of the Judiciary Committee hold a hearing now. The president is claiming that rigging the rules is perfectly legitimate. He claims an absolute right to order the Justice Department to do anything he wants. And the president has, as his attorney general, an enabler, and that's a kind word, who actually supports this view. Does anyone think it's out of the question that President Trump might order the FBI to investigate Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, or anyone else without any evidence to support such an arbitrary violation of individual rights? Oh, I know, some far-right conspiratorial writer who has no credibility and who just makes things up, writes it, Fox News puts it on, Sean Hannity or someone talks about it, and then the president says investigate. That is third world behavior, not American behavior. That kind of behavior defiles that great flag that is standing above us. This is not ordinary stuff. I've never seen it before with any president, Democrat, Republican, liberal, or conservative. Does any serious person believe the president's abuse would be limited to the Justice Department? Does any serious person think that Trump might not order the Justice Department to treat his friends, associate, and family members differently than it treats ordinary citizens? And that Attorney General Barr would just carry out these orders? Of course, none of this is out of the question. The president asserted his absolute right to do whatever he wants yesterday. We are witnessing a crisis in the rule of law in America, unlike one we have ever seen before. It's a crisis of President Trump's making, but it was enabled and emboldened by every Senate Republican who was too afraid to stand up to him and say the simple word no when the vast majority of them knew that that was the right thing to do. Republicans thought the president would learn his lesson. It turned out that the lesson he learned was not that he went too far, not that he needed to rein it in. The lesson the president learned was that the Re Republican Party will not hold him accountable no matter how egregious his behavior. Not now, not ever. Senate Republicans voted to excuse President Trump's abuses of power. They voted to abdicate the constitutional authority of Congress to check on an overreaching executive. Senate Republicans now own this crisis, and they're responsible for every new abuse of power President Trump commits. John Adams famously described our grand republic that he helped create as a government of laws, not of men. Our founding fathers, foremost concern, of course, was to escape the tyranny of a government of men, more specifically a king. That's why the founders created a republic in America. That's why the patriots died for the freedom we are now blessed with. And yet, after almost two and a half centuries of experience in self-government as a republic, we are once again faced with the very serious and looming question. Do we want a government of laws or of men? Do we want to be governed by the laws of the United States or by the whims of one man? I don't think my Republican colleagues fully appreciated what they were unleashing when they voted in the impeachment trial to excuse the president's conduct. Although maybe they did. They were just afraid, fearful, shaking their knee in their boots because Trump might take vengeance out on them as he did on Senators Flake and Corker. They voted to acquit the president after he used his immense power to pressure a foreign leader to announce an investigation to smear a rival. What we have seen in the hours and days since that fateful acquittal vote last Wednesday is so disturbing. In a parade of horribles, this is one of the most horrible things President Trump has done. In a parade of horribles, this is one of the most feeble, servile actions of Republicans just no one's saying a peep about it. We are seeing a man, we are seeing the behavior of a man who has contempt for the rule of law, beginning to try out the new unrestrained power conferred on him by 52, 53, well, 52 Republican senators, one brave one. 
left to his own devices, President Trump would turn America into a banana republic where the dictator can do whatever he wants and the Justice Department is the president's personal law firm, not a defender of the rule of law. It is a sad day in America, a sad day. The Founding Fathers created something brand new, a republic, because they were afraid of monarchy. Senate Republicans aiding and abetting President Trump to get much closer to that monarchy than we have been in a long time. Senate Republicans have created something very close to a monarchy if they can keep it. Now on war powers, <clears throat> later today, the Senate will debate will begin debate on Senator Kane's war power resolution, preventing President Trump from unilaterally escalating military action against Iran. The Constitution is clear. Congress alone has the power to declare wars. The President has no authority to enter the United States into another endless conflict in the Middle East. But I fear that the strike against Iranian Major General Soleimani last month may, have bum may bumble us into one. With this bipartisan resolution, the Senate can assert its constitutional authority and send a clear bipartisan message to the President that he cannot sidestep Congress when it comes to matters of war and peace. It was immediately clear that the strike against General Soleimani was carried out with insufficient transparency, without proper notification of Congress, and without a clear plan for what comes next. The m last month has only magnified these problems. President Trump initially claimed that no one was hurt after Iran retaliated against forces on January 8th. Now the Pentagon says over 100 military personnel suffered a traumatic brain injury. Why is it taking so long for us to learn that American troops were hurt in the attack? Who ordered the withholding of that information? Was it President Trump? Sure wouldn't be surprising. And who in the military the military, which is in a bulwark, one of the few, particularly when General Mattis was the secretary, who in the military let that happen? Just as importantly, what is the president's strategy for keeping our troops safe in the coming months? The administration has deliberately refused to be transparent with Congress about the aftermath of the Iranian strike. I fear that by keeping Congress in the dark, President Trump is once again hoping to short-circuit our checks and balances and escape scrutiny. That's why Senator Kane's War Powers Resolution is a matter of urgent necessity. I commend Senator Kane on the job he has done and urge my colleagues of both parties to vote in favor of this resolution. I yield the floor.